you and I'm so happy to be uh, here again. So in the morning we were just talking about programmatic in 2024 and we talked about many trends where I said that automation and AI will play a bigger role and I'm so happy to uh, moderate this panel with of course uh, the market leaders here and I, I think we could have nobody better than you to talk about AI especially when we can have brand perspective and we can have a lot of tool tech perspective from you guys too. So I'll not take a lot of time because uh, I'm sure you're eager to hear from them what's their take on automation and AI. So I'll begin with my first question and that goes to uh, Anvisha, you, okay. Um, as we all know that of course AI had been taking over the stage uh, when it comes to optimizations or uh, activations of campaign. But as we also talked about it in the morning that AI also uh, leads to a lot of brand personalization and uh, driving a lot of content creation, content personalization. So Anvesha, I want to hear from you. Have you ever experienced uh, such kind of campaign or curated or what is your take on it when it comes to integrating AI with uh, personalization? Yeah. Yes, I think uh, the way AI is evolving is in two ways. One is it's really democratize, democratizing the way it works. So it's, it's very much available to uh, a lot of wider audience. It is more cost effective. So there are a lot of new use cases, hence that kind of come up, right? And historically what we've seen is that we've tried to use AI for our B2C campaigns where we're trying to customize, personalize um, the likes of, you know, YouTube search, well, director's mix, right? So just to contextualize each and every ad basis, the kind of content that is going to be shown at, right? So that is one way that we have historically been using it and it's evolved, the product has even evolved now. Uh, one of the recent ways in which HUL did this was more from a B2B perspective as well. So we have a, an app called Shikha where the the, you know, the shopkeepers can actually place orders to distributors on that app. And basically what we did is that we said that, okay, let's create an, an ad that, you know, had a celebrity voice of Arshad Varsi and they could customize it and send it across to their own customer base. So this basically was something that they could use and it was very, like, it, it, it basically shows the power of AI that something has become so accessible to a larger base at just like one click. And they could customize, personalize, we had over 1.6 million of our di distributors using this. And this was something which really is shows how AI can really revolutionize the way you can operate something at scale and, and execute it. That's really impressive and uh, that's why I say that when brands talk about usage of AI, it just go, goes beyond to even what we can think of. And that's really interesting to hear that when you say that 1.6 million uh, I mean, of your profile uh, distributors are using that app. And would you want to also talk about an impact in terms of matrix which that campaign or that uh, initiative has led for you? So exactly, so I think the impact more was from the perspective of what is the scale at which, it, you know, we were you, basically when we started the campaign, a new ad was being created every 20 seconds. So you can imagine the power and what it really was helping, like they, they really found it something so useful. So if you would go to the market, you'd really see that. So that's the kind of impact. And that also basically helps us empower our partners. So that's, you know, that's the way we look at it, that what's the scale at which you were able to generate this and what was actually the adoption that happened? Because, you know, when you roll out, you obviously want uh, the adoption. So that was basically how we really looked at the impact of this as something really they value and they want to use. Right, very well. So Vikram, I would also like to ask a similar question to you uh, because when we hear uh, from Anvesha, it's more from a different category, right? But since you represent Bajaj, uh, Alliance, uh, General Insurance, it's a very different and opposite category in itself. So if I have to ask you usage of AI into personalization or any other uh, optimization matrix where you feel it impacts your campaign value but just beyond activation, what would that be? Okay, for starters, I think I'll talk a little of the online bit also because by virtue of the industry I belong to, we are predominantly offline. So a lot of our insurance is sold through advisors, right? We've got close to a lakh advisors that work for Bajaj Alliance. Uh, like she said, Arshad Varsi, we've, we, in insurance, uh, my MD's name is Mr. Tapan Singhel. He's the, he's the celebrity in the insurance sector. And I'm not kidding you and I'll tell you why. So we created his digital avatar and imagine in a year, like she said, the speed we connected with one lakh agents on their birthdays, anniversaries, uh, when they did well, when something was wrong, something was bad, something was great. 
in all their ups and downs, we had a video of our MD, Mr. Tapan Singhal, talking to them. And it was a two-way communication, so they could communicate and send us a note, uh, a voice note, a video note, a text note. And in a span of a few days, which was otherwise considered impossible because otherwise calling them would take longer time. Uh, turnaround would be bad because half people don't answer unknown calls these days, right? Uh, these messages went via WhatsApp, emails and uh, SMS. We connected with all one lakh agents. That was, I think, probably the best hit ratio one could have ever assumed. A hundred percent hit ratio where we got responses from all of them. Could be a thumbs up, could be great. A few of them complained. All those complaints were noted, immediately actioned. So imagine in, in less than a week, we had more than a lakh advisors' uh, concerns addressed. If they were doing well, it was uh, whatever we did well, we made sure that we do that a lot more. So that anything that's working well should be replicated. Copy paste ka zamana hai, so we completely believe in that. And something that didn't do well, we immediately worked on that to make sure that it gives us a better result. So why I took the offline example is because a big chunk of insurance is still sold offline. And uh, that's one thing, as a perspective using AI, I thought I should bring on the table. And it's quite powerful. It's, it's I think, here to stay. Turnaround is incredibly fast. Uh, the quality of the, uh, you all would have seen Shah Rukh Khan ka Cadbury wala ad, right? I'm talking about a similar concept where it was him, the MD talking, but the names were changing, but it was so seamless that at times even we got confused how could he make so many videos, right? So I think that's, that's where it stands and it's, it's here to stay. It's actually very insightful and I, while I'm moderating the panel, but even I was listening to you that it's very interesting to hear that how offline, in an, an offline world, you could really curate this because even me as a user, I don't like taking any unknown calls thinking it's a spam, right? But at the same time, how do you pass on your message to a consumer? And it's very interesting that how you've used AI uh, in an offline world to really impact, uh, to create a very impactful campaign for you. But if I have to really uh, hear it from uh, you for porno, right? So just Adhika tell me and let, me, let all of us know we could hear how online campaigns are working for driving con uh, conversions, orders, right? Then we have an offline world uh, where AI is adding a value. But when you talk about Perno, I mean, both does not really play a proper role. And uh, Perno comes a lot with a lot of limitations. And hence, you have to take a very creative route yet to uh, utilize AI and, you know, drive a lot of impact for you. So how do you see AI playing a role when it comes to personalization for your category as such? So what you're saying, Timpy, is uh, correct. Uh, we come from a category that is very complicated and dark, but AI provides us with possibilities that we could have never thought of. For example, um, Royal Stag Package Drinking Water is one of the largest partners of the World Cup, which just, you know, got over. And year on year, we do the same things where we are like, okay, can you please participate in a contest? Can you please, uh, you know, win passes? And, you know, we're dri trying to drive consumer delight. Uh, but if we could sort of, you know, and we did that, uh, get the star of the show, Rohit Sharma, come and have personalized messages for each of the participants while they get a pass. Or they could superimpose themselves on the video while the toss happened with him. We've also created videos where there's a conversation where people could replace the actors with their own selves. Of course, not everything does well because, you know, AI with its, you know, you know, vast uh, ease, I think, of use. We could do it multiple times and create so many videos, but not all of them make sense. And we've realized over that period that maybe the smaller snippets, where they are there at the toss or a picture or a frame, you know, works better. But what it was able to do for a category like ours is, uh, you know, just give that consumer that push saying, oh my God, I've won a ticket and I have got a personalized message from the Indian captain himself to come and watch the match. So for us, it really worked. And while we did this online, we also did it at the point of sale, where you could get a personalized message and ask to participate in the contest. So yes, g given the challenges that we have, uh, AI really helps us in consumer delight and telling them. And while I hear both my counterparts talk about B2B, which we will be restricted to do, but for B2C and for the category that I represent, it was so amazing to have all of them, you know, be delighted with this particular message which says that, you know, looking forward to seeing you in Ahmedabad on the finals. I mean, like, people were writing thanks, like, thank you so much, you know, I really love this video. I will put it on non DMs because I don't think none of them want to write it anywhere else. They're just like, oh, yeah, I want to pass. So I think we ended up doing that. And in terms of impact, we did see our participant participation rates go up significantly. Of course, it was the World Cup, but we have benchmarks of the 
previous year World Cup and the previous year. So this seemed to surpass it and the quick and ease of turning around these things is much, much easier with AI. Nice, that's so interesting and more than interesting, I'll say that I could hear different perspectives coming in. So starting with you, I heard about Director's Mix, then you talked about Generative AI, how that had led an impact in our offline world. And of course, more I heard about Perno, it's always crazy and exciting because I always keep on thinking, okay, what can you do in it, having so many limitations around. So Prateek, now it comes to you and I'm sure uh, when I talk about Google and especially when you're representing G, uh, GMP, right? So uh, you hold expertise around all three and you can really talk so well around all three. So I really want to hear your views on all three, which is how do you think Director makes playing a role for especially all categories and how do you also see generative AI kind of leading the road for us, and especially when also, um, you know, Atika talks about that how uh, they try to create more of user engagement in a very uh, content curated manner. How do you see GMP playing that role? Yeah. I think all good answers start with, let me take a step back. So, so let me take a step back. Uh, so like you rightly said, Devi, uh, we are kind of involved at every step of the way, right? So the way Google broadly sees AI is essentially a force multiplier or something, that, something which is a tool to enable what you wanted to do in the first place. It's not like the desire to connect with agents is new or the desire to connect with customers is new. Nothing, none of that is new. Uh, it, it's just a significantly better, faster, nicer way to do, do it. And that, that is at the core of whatever we're doing in every product area. So Google Cloud, for example, will touch a lot of what he mentioned uh, in terms of transcription, scaling, uh, giving out messages, transcribing it, getting insights from that stuff. Director Mix, for example, would be one such aspect of AI where we feel that if there's a great message to be delivered via video, Director Mix allows you to do that mixing and matching and stitching and distribution all at ease. Director's Mix is also not new. We've had it for a few years now, right? But what it could do with, say, in that fable Shahrukh Khan ad, uh, that, that's new. So I, I, I think these iterative improvements will keep on happening. Um, in, in ad tech and in tech in general, we tend to get a bit uh, what the Americans call drinking your own Kool-Aid, which is essentially you know, getting caught in your own echo chamber of what you think is amazing. Um, but I think on a more humbling note, we should remember that eventually if the technology is not adding value beyond the point, it will kind of just stabilize or it'll just become the new normal. A really good example is just like four or five years ago, we had this whole gamut of voice uh, bots. So Amazon had something, Google had something, and everybody was going gaga over how it's going to replace everything, right? You will not need to take calls, you won't need to make calls, but it kind of plateaued out. So I, I think as marketers and as practitioners, the responsibility is to keep the customer value at the center um, and be generative AI, which has applications heavy applications in search, directors mix, which is heavy applications in video, or we have these cross-product solutions now which cut, work cut across everything, eventually it has to add value, and that's at least how we like to look at this, this entire piece. Thank you, Pratik. That really, uh, Vikram, that uh, really adds uh, a lot of value. So when Pratik, I heard you, and Vikram, I heard you, especially when it comes to generative AI, which is uh, fairly very new uh, in our country, not many are adopting it. Yeah. And Pratik, the way you told me that uh, director's mix is more around video uh, landscape. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Atika, again, that question comes to you because I know that both at HUL uh, and at uh, Perno, uh, video is being heavily utilized, right? So how do you see video as a landscape, not just only within digital, mm -hmm. but do you see automation, AI, or any kind of evolution in video kind of growing that further more? with the help of uh, the levers that you have at hand in terms of maybe achieving a reach or any other metric that you feel makes more, adds more value to your campaigns? So I think uh, what, so video for us is a very powerful medium because for us we, what we uh, communicate which is the purpose of the brand is through video and it's not connected through the line that maybe Anvesha and the Unilever team has an advantage of. So for us video becomes very important but as you would know Dimpy when you're creating an entire, uh, you know, brand storytelling. It takes months and months of coming together, the storytelling, the production and so on. And any minute changes in that used to be so hectic and technical, taking hours and days. I think with generative AI, it's just those smaller things. While I understand that you keep the 
consumer at the center of it and you will see a lot of brands you know trying to ape or learn and figure out something around it but the fact is that generative ai is giving us the power to make those small you know incremental changes that can bring a smile to your face to your face to my face to anybody's face and in a record turnaround time i think that is most important and will be able to reach you whether it's through youtube through facebook or through any other mediums and even connected television now so i think that's the power of ai for us and the tools that it gives us is a lot of lead time uh, uh you know uh, because you just eliminate the time that's spent behind you know making changes doing the multiple revisions and also the facility to be able to communicate that on multiple mediums knowing you know that particular person i mean simple things like having a message that just says oh hi dimpy this is so and so i hope you're having a great day i know it sounds very lame but sometimes it just works very very well it adds that touch so i think ai does definitely put us uh, back where we can do the turn around much faster and deliver it at the right platforms to the people thank you and also anvisha do you uh, have you also witnessed ad unilever in terms of video approach have you seen any kind of changes or have you adopted any new uh, new approaches uh, especially with any tools and technologies and things changing around you uh yeah so dimpy spoke about you know when you actually deploy the video in the in the market i just want to speak taking a step back because i thought that's the best way to start uh taking a step back to really even see before we actually launch the video can we do a pre testing to see how it's going to really work so i think the real power of ai uh, because of course it has really evolved and is obviously will evolve in terms of all the optimizations and main practices but in terms of predictive analytics is where i see a lot of uh, development and a lot of uh, disruption is going to come so what we're doing currently is uh, developing a tool where we can do more effective pre testing so like you know your saliency overly like where is the audience really which part of the video is where the attention is going or maybe your recall value like which how was your logo perceived was it really looked at so basically having that simulating the real life interactions and really seeing whether if i have a, a you know if i have two videos that i want to really test and you know and it could be even simple elements that you change but you actually see how that's going to happen so basically that is really going to help us understand what is the kind of content that you should even put out because you know you spend a significant amount of money on distributing that content so how do you really make sure that you're putting out the best asset in the market uh, that is something that you know we are looking to evolve right. for video that's next very well vikram let's talk to you about it because uh, again when we when i talk about specialty testing uh, your category cannot go easy about it yeah. uh, because i'm sure in your category every uh, media uh, money that you spend has to lead go outcome which is not just in a form of a brand recall or a reach but goes beyond and i always hear this question which is uh what is the roi eventually what is the impact of it on my business outcomes eventually what's what's going to happen there so how do you really stitch this entire journey how do you see it happening for you when it comes to just automation and testing uh and i'm sure your campaign start from branding funnel but goes to bottom to the performance funnels so how do you really see that happening for you see the thing with insurance is it's a conversational product so if i if i just do things in the digital space it's not going to sell uh whenever i come to these conferences i like it because i see a lot of people who are who can be my customers all of you in this room are definitely underinsured so if if what we were almost always doing worked uh, insurance companies would have been at a very different level right uh, because it's a conversational product taking multiple steps back the thing that generative ai has really helped us is in identifying what really works if you see back in the days the insurance ads would be talking about fear या बुरा वक्त आएगा तो क्या होगा सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ बट दिस जनरेशन दैट वेर ऑल दैट वेर ऑल अ पार्ट ऑफ दैट फ्यर इज कम्प्लीटली गॉन अवे अ बिग पार्ट ऑफ दैट फ्यर इज बिन टेकिंग केयर ऑफ बाय द पेरेंट्स एंड द मनी दैट वी आर मेकिंग इज फॉर अस टू स्पेंड हैव अ गुड टाइम सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ राइट बट बाय इंश्योरेंस सो दिस टूल रियली हेल्प्स अस अंडरस्टैंड वॉट रियली वर्क सो इफ यू लुक एट अ रिसेंट एड कैम्पेन इट डजन टॉक अबाउट फियर इट एक्चुअली टॉक्स अबाउट द फैक्ट दैट इफ यू बॉट अ हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस एंड थैंकफुली नथिंग हैपन टू यू दिस इयर but a stranger living in let's say a small town like hazari bag went through something your money that you bought the insurance for is helping someone else so this 
is the kind of content that we're trying to create. Instead of instilling fear, we're trying to show that your money is helping someone else who you don't even know. So in a way, you're trying to do your own bit of small CSR by buying a health insurance policy or a motor insurance policy, right? So these are the tools that help us to take multiple steps back. And when you talk about ROI, of course, when I show a video like this, ROI is only impressions because I can't really imagine people listening to this and immediately going and saying, oh, it's a nice sunny day, let me buy insurance. Unfortunately, in the industry that I come from, we are waiting for a day where people wake up and say, that conference dance I will take travel insurance or so on and so forth, right? That's just not happening. So I think these tools really help us in identifying what to communicate how. I met an old friend here who travels two hours a day to work. Now let's say if I show him a video when he's not at a signal and uh, it's in his feed and he misses it, then there's no point, right? Versus I know that when the person hits a signal, he's on his phone and going through a feed. If I show it to him then, Insurance, when you're driving, especially a car, if I show a motor ad, it'll have more relevance. So I think these tools really help you identify what to do when versus just bombarding because I think gone are the days when if you bombard somebody with an X amount of information, it'll really convert into sales. It's being there at the right time, especially for an industry like insurance because like I said, you're anyway not inclined to buy it. So if I'm in a time when you don't need me, it has no relevance. Uh, somebody just, I met here, bought a pet dog insurance, right, which, which we sell. So, if you're not on a pet site and if I do, if I'm on a pet site, I show you a motor insurance, it has no relevance, the video, right? So, this is where I think these tools really help you to be at the right pace for the right audience. Like for you, if you don't have a pet, I show you a pet dog ad, it has no relevance. Yeah. It's like, hey, it looks cute, but what do I do with it, right? So, I think these tools really help you in understanding how to be where, when, at the right time for it to culminate into sales. So I think that's what we uh, really use it at and uh, we've seen some reasonable amount of uh, numbers there. Thank you Vikram, that's really ins uh, interesting and even as I, as I told you, I really <laughs> like hearing you. Uh, so when you said where, when at the right time and I resonate the same that when you talk about programmatic or automation, uh, while we just uh, really hook on ourselves when it, we talk about automation only to AI, but it's beyond, it's not just AI but just much more. So let's talk about other things within this, uh, within this uh, same scape. So when we talk about uh, voice as a module, we know that automation, AI, whatever term you may want to use around it, but has really shaped it up. And voice and audio is not just about an audio ad coming your way. The way Vikram just rightly mentioned that when you're driving and your intent is to reach to your office right now, you're in traffic, and an ad is coming, which could be anything via pizza, via, you know, via an insurance. Like, let me just reach, I'm just, you know, entering a signal, etc. Doesn't make really uh, a lot of sense to you. But I have seen and we have done some campaigns at Trupem also in past, tested, in fact, I'll say, where voice ad was talking to you. And uh, so it was again for a pizza though that, would you want to buy a pizza? It's a one, one, one plus one offer today. And basis what you respond, which could be, yes, I'm interested. Then it will say, okay, should I repeat your previous order? Or should I order XYZ, which pizza for you? Should I open, talk a menu to you? But if you say no, then it's going to run same ad to you later in the day. Then how about now? Are you in a mood to order pizza right now? Right? Something which uh, definitely that ad, this is just one way communication cannot do that. But an ad which is uh, working on an automation AI can talk two way. So, uh, and I'm sure even brands, they think way too loud, right? We execute but think in those directions. So even if campaign not executed, but have you ever thought of such a campaign which is like I just heard from Vikram, which was using generative AI that really led to a lot of impact. So, Atika asking you, um, have you ever went to those kind of lens where like, let's experiment this and let's see. So, we have uh, a couple of experiments uh, because I was just listening to Vikram and I was like, yeah, we, we do a couple of experiments and we've uh, majorly tied up with uh, YouTube to figure out specifically the time of the day and the kind of consumer profiles that would be interested in us, uh, in our brands, through the line. And uh, we've had, uh, you know, edits running like, you know, it's raining now, would you want to, you know, take a, uh, sit down and take a pause or, you know, something like that. And what we've seen is in those, the interactions go really high. But unfortunately, because we cannot sell it anything on e-commerce, you know, you don't have that connectivity. Though we do see a lot of interaction and consumer feedback and trade feedback that these things work. Also, a couple of campaigns that are upcoming for us as a company, uh, we, we are looking at not just voice interactivity, but also what you can do beyond it. If there is an end point where you can drive the customer to, maybe to an event which is 
Pono Rica led or so on and so forth. So we, because we are limited to close the loop, uh, using voice and using some of these tactical ways of targeting, making sure, because we know certain time, time zones and of course like we know post 7 and we know Tuesday to Saturday is the time when the category is really consumed. How do we like link it back and then link it to one of our events, maybe giving them something, an entry to a sunburn or a magnetic fields and so on. So this is in the process but yes like, like you know, uh, uh, everybody discussed over here. It's just not about what you're communicating, but also where and for us specifically close the loop with a brand experience. So that's that's what we are hoping to in the future. Thank you, Atika. By the way, you really uh, hit some chords when you talked about sunburn and magnetic fields. <laughs> but let's get back <laughs> onto our panel. Yeah, and Vesha, you wanna hear about uh, again, but a different uh, uh, I'll say topic here, which is more to do with uh, collection of audiences and first party data because we cannot miss this opportunity. You represent Unilever, which is biggest in the country, right, when it comes to media spends also. And we have seen now a lot many campaigns are being planned, especially by giants uh, brands of the, uh, of the country, because they have that capacity to collect data at that length and then activate it. And of course, uh, automation or this world uh, is getting enabled with the help of AI and automation world. So would you want to share some insights on first party data or what value do you think that's going to add uh, for your campaigns? Yes, I mean, at some point in time, we are going to move to a cookie-less world whenever that happens. Uh, but, you know, uh, the way uh, that I look at first-party data and then we, we, we all approach it is that it has to be a value exchange uh, for the consumer to really share that information with you. Um, so, wherever and whatever touch points that we are able to do that, I think uh, w one really, uh, you know, again, another futuristic development that I see would be in terms of closed loop systems, where we're able to feed this data back into, because currently what we see is mostly like, you're able to optimize mostly till the click, and sometimes to some kind of say, okay, this was my order value, this was my conversion. But if you're able to, especially, you know, where you have a leads, leads, et cetera, going in, uh, you actually want, um, some that information to go back to the system and when you have first party data when you have all of those uh, you know all, all of those traits of the consumer that you've been able to capture if you can feed that data back into these algorithms we will have a far richer way of saying it was not just a click or a conversion so to see on the on the dashboard but it was actually a customer can you even look at a lifetime value of that customer so basically when you look at something which is beyond and really able to tie back that's something that we are really striving towards. Of course, it comes with that responsibility of what are the privacy norms that are going to be there, how are we really going to make sure that, you know, it is, it is all compliant, etc. That's, you know, another uh, point. But basically, I think that is something that I look as, you know, at the future. Because, of course, you have a lot of data points. You can obviously do your segmentation, targeting, cohorts, etc. That is all uh, very much possible and that has been possible over the years. But that closed loop system is something that we see is going to really uh, make the campaigns much more effective and much more, uh, you know, much more efficient. Right. Thank you, Anvesha, for uh, really bringing up these points. And Vikram, I would really I'd like to ask you these questions because uh, when we talk about uh, activation of campaign with first party data, I think that adds a lot of uh, value for your category too. And uh, why am I doing it? Because then I want to hear from Pratik because he has to combine both worlds together, both different categories, right? So, Victor, I want to understand from you that first party data, what relevance does it have for you and how do you see it getting utilized in your category? Okay, especially, specifically for insurance, I think that plays a very, very vital role. Of course, Kukil is being there, all of that happening, but see, in insurance, whenever you buy any, any form of insurance, there's a lot of data that you have to collect from the consumer, right? Uh, and a part of what the premium will be will depend on the kind of data that you're providing to us. Unfortunately, like I said in the beginning, in insurance, we're still not even at the cusp of where we can say that, yes, we can completely kill the online world because of the product that we are selling. Uh, most folks here, with the product that they're selling is when you buy it, you get something immediately, right? Like a, like there's an instant gratification. Most, most of us spend money on things where we get something instantly. Insurance is... Filmy dialogue, you're selling a promise, right? 
So the actual product of insurance is a claim. So for us to really get there, to be out and out in that field, to be selling it using first party data, uh, completely killing it in the digital world will still take some time. Because like I said, insurance is an out and out conversational product. Uh, a big part of the industry is still run by advisors and that's why we do a lot for them. Because if they are, they have the ammunition, like the works of micro sites for advisors, they've got their own SEO, SEM strategies working around so that for them to reach out to people at the right point in time is when insurance will be for everyone in this room and they'll be buying it, right? So to your question, we're not there yet to really have a, a substantial number to be thrown at, but I'm sure after once he summarizes something really clicks and if you do a POC with them, why not? Yeah, thank you. So Pratik, now of course uh, the uh, entire responsibility lies on you to also enlighten us to know more about it. Um, as rightly Anvesha mentioned that uh, she talked about connectivity of the journey of audience. That it's not just about showing an ad, but how do you really take that insight back and how do you understand a journey beyond and then how to action it. Similarly, Pratik talked about the fact that the, the journey is long, they're not yet there, but uh, especially in an area where you're dependent too much on your advisors, you still have a lot of microsites uh, kind of you know, driving that journey and conversion for you. So how do you see GMP? or any other tool for that matter, providing that solution and adding value? So, it's pretty much the holy grail, right? What, she's, what everybody's asking over here, these are the fundamental questions of marketing, not just even digital marketing. Um, when it comes to talking about cookies being a decaying resource or all of that going away, why 1P data is important, um, these are all individually correct statements to make. Um, to, to what she said earlier on the, the reach uh, planning close the loop systems. In my opinion, that I think is the big one. Because what we feel, or at least what I personally feel, is that today is the least complicated day that we will live through. It's only going to get more complicated from here, fr from here onwards. I mean, the days where you could have like three Excel sheets and put a macro or we look up and then have attribution, th those are long gone. Uh, and it is in my opinion at least, it's humanly impossible for people individually without having these tool sets to be able to do attribution at the scale or at the challenge that the need of the R is. So for example, in his case, being able to have a attribution model that cuts across both what the offline guys are doing and what they are doing as a brand. Uh, similarly, in, in the case of say D2C or even Ecom, where the fulfillment is happening through a system that's completely in its own world, separate from TV and YouTube and Meta and everything else. And in your case, where you actually can't just sell it, right? Uh, like, like Pono, for example, I know sell invests a lot, I think, in in-store advertising as well, because that's where the consumption happens, right? Which is also spends going on from you. So attribution is not impossible. It's just a very, very challenging problem that we have right now. And at the core of it, AI is just, what is AI? It's just computation happening at a very different order that we've ever experienced before. There are even today multiple attribution partners and folks who are trying to build incrementally better algorithms to pull this thing together. And not all of it's gonna come from Google. Uh, it's gonna be an industry-wide thing. But I think while it's the least complicated day that we will live through, we're also the closest that we've ever been to coming to a view which is as comprehensive as possible. And, and the reason I'm saying it's the least complicated day is that the cookie story is already kind of over. Uh, it's, we know it's coming. Uh, Chrome is, I think it's later next year. Device series on Android will follow shortly after. Uh, if you are operating in markets outside of uh, India, you would have already seen what has happened on the Apple side of things, how it's completely changed the way marketing needs to happen. So we have, have the immense advantage of learning from what's happened elsewhere to fix our strategies before it comes, the changes come to us. 1P data is really the only data anymore. Everything else is a decaying resource. I mean, you can hang on to it, but building high quality, durable, first party data sets and building your own custom algorithms on top of it is, in my opinion, the way forward. Google and JMP have a suit of products to do that, but this is not a sales pitch. Uh, but yes, it exists and that's what we are trying to add. That's the value that we are trying to add to, to the world right now. Yeah. So, uh, Priti, we'd like to hear more from you because as you said that, First party data is actually the only data we yeah. all will be left with uh, while we can hang on to other yeah. sources. So that's true, but at the same time, uh, data governance then plays a bigger role. 
Yeah. And I feel it's more to do with being responsible with that data and really being very cautious and very, care very careful uh, around that. Especially when we talk about privacy in this AI world. What would be your guidance uh, to everybody in the audience and even to our friend, uh, friends here on the panel? That how, when we talk about collection of data, what are the, those things that everybody should be keeping in mind? So, two things that I would say. One is that, because folks over here are from global companies, they've, most of them already come in with very stringent rules and regulations on how data should be managed, uh, thanks to what has happened in Europe, etc. So most people kind of start off on a good ground. Uh, I think I see more challenges where companies are more homegrown, and it's not really in the culture to see that data as something which is, which has a regulatory requirement to be protected and handled in a certain way. Right? I mean, as individuals, we are putting our phone numbers and emails on our every every guard in every building has a phone numbers, which is PII, right? So culturally, we're not used to it, but I think as organizations, it's extremely important that we are in very much in line with the regulations that are coming across in our country. And the frameworks that at least we have seen in India are pretty much, I mean, if not at par, they're much ahead of what everybody else is doing, um, which is, again, I think a benefit of seeing and learning the same changes play out in other markets. So. Um, do talk to your lawyers. I'm not a lawyer, so I can't recommend the right strategy. But make sure that any any data being handled by you or being handled on behalf of you by a third party, uh, it eventually is your responsibility. Right? So talk to your lawyers. Be sure, be, be, have a good governance privacy policy in place. And make sure there is governance around actually adhering to those practices. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll stop there. Right. Uh, but that was really insightful and I would just want to in fact add on to it because uh, when we had been talking about data privacy and data governance, it's very important that even when we are activating any third party tool, we may not realize but that's a passage of data. When we say that there are third party tools which optimizes a campaign, but eventually that campaign is getting optimized on the data of your campaign. So that third party goes uh, beyond your controlled walls. So your data has already gone in those walls. So for everyone, it's very important to understand that even when you're getting a partner on board, it's not just about their capabilities that they will be adding, the efficiency, but you need to ensure, understand that at the end, eventually, brands are responsible for governing that data. So if you're partnering with any partner in the form of API integration when you're flowing your data for optimization, responsibility still lies on you. So you have to ensure which partner on your onboarding and how you're selecting and securing uh, your data uh, safety there. Uh, since we don't have a lot of time, but I really want to understand from all of you your personal opinion and that first one word that comes to your mind when you think about AI or automation and why do you really connect it with that word. I would like to pick this up from Vikram. Okay, for me, I think it's convenience uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, <clears throat> because like I said, we're a traditional industry. How we've used AI is very interesting. There's a feature called MOTS. It's called Moto on the Spot. So we're trying to create a place where if you if you hit another person's car, you step down, you through our app click photos and because we are in the industry for 22 years, we've got a lot of claims data, you got AI ML in the background and it in 20, 15 minutes tells you that as per us, it'll be an 11,000 rupees worth of damage. If you say yes, in five minutes, you get the money in your account. You go to a garage and you tell them that claim karna hai, gaadi thi karana hai. If they say, hamare sab se 9,000 hoga and we've given you 12,000, that 3,000 is for you to keep. So I think, I think more and more if industries, apart from the digital sphere, if they start using AI, ML uh, to make people's life convenient, I think it is a tool that should be, should be used to make people's life convenient, uh, make it effortless. But we should also be mindful and also be okay with the fact that this will become very, very big. But I'm very clear of the fact that it will not take people's jobs because there's still a lot of hue and cry around that. I think it will still need humans to really, really steer it the right way. Uh, but I think it should be used wisely. Uh, like I said, identify problem statements like we did. We used to take uh, any insurance company. I think back in those days, if you had a car, you had to go to a bumper insurance company. So you had to show that the car is broken. From there, it came to months, then to days, and now it's minutes. Now our next target is why not one minute, right? So we've come to 20 minutes. It will happen. And, and I think tools like AIML will only help us because they will enable you to do the right thing and not the wrong. And it will be mostly in favor of the consumer. And as insurers, if we can't be in favor of the consumer, then we don't deserve to sell insurance. So I think convenience uh, over anything else. Absolutely. 
Uh, Pratik, what about you? I think the one word would be responsibility um, because I think from where at least we are seeing it, the, the, uh, the amount of value that can be derived is immense but also if not used in the correct way, it also exposes us just as people to things that you would rather not be. So wielding that pretty immense power responsible, responsibly I think is the main thing. If there was a second word though, the second word would be fun because if you're not using it just to get a laugh and really enjoy what it can do, you're, you're really missing out. And, and for those of you who have young children, if you've not fired up a bard to make up a story on the spot at night, uh, you're really missing out. It is incredible. I think the only being that can compete with a child's imagination right now is one of these Gen AI chatbots. So play with them. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Don't you think that kids have a lot with AI already? Like in my house, I have a nephew and he's always on something called Roblox where he's creating his own world using AI and I'm like, excuse me, leave that computer alone. <laughs> it, it, is, it is really genuinely insane. So just on that subject, so uh, my kid was born when these uh, Google homes of the world were coming out and he's grown up with a bunch of speakers around him. Uh, his default way of getting information is just speaking into the air and saying, hey Google, answer this. He said that in parks where there is no device because that's his default way of getting data. So it is strange. Uh, he's programming before he has learned to actually write it by hand. Things have changed quite a bit and they will continue to. In fact, just to add on to his point, it's actually true because uh, when I'm talking about this campaign, uh, which we did at Group M, which was just trying out voice in audio, how does that work? Uh, it, I'll just tell you how it cropped up. We were planned, I mean, for some uh, internal uh, kind of a, a battleground that we have at Group M, which is around innovation. We were thinking what to innovate more and more. And then I remember I was having this chat with my nephew in terms of just about him that to engage him, that okay, tell me how much to is two into two. And he opened up his iPad and he was like, tell me uh, the multiplier of two. I was like, excuse me, <laughs> you don't even know this and plus you're using this. And then I could really observe that he taught using phone to my mom and she doesn't know how to operate phone that well, but she's able to find things for us and she orders it. So I realized that it's the new generation and even the older one who are never on phone they're able to use it without us, right? And they don't type, they don't use keyword. For them, it's everything is just voice. And they use it better than us. Even my mom uses it better than me. She's able to find out things that are happening in the country about the apps better than me because she has a fastest, fastest and convenient way to do that. Uh, when I talk about series and you know any kind of voice apps for that matter, we just think about them as a fun uh, and we, we don't really think beyond them. But I don't see that we are far away or ahead from the days where uh, you'll see very soon advertisements running on your Alexas too. <laughs> that would you want me to order this way because every uh, communication that you're doing with your Alexa is in a form of data set and bases your insights in terms of your cohorting, what kind of uh, communications are you doing, ads can really be shown to you. So definitely you're right there that yes, uh, fun should never be missed and AI does play a big, uh, bigger role there. Atika, coming on to you. Actually, the one word is, and it was throughout my conversation, I really think it's delight. It's not to consumers, it's to human beings across. It's delight and the ease at which you can be delighted so easily. And you're just talking about your nephew and the older generation. I'll just tell you this voice search and automation is so crazy. My mother really likes to grow plants or whatever, and there was this unseasonal rain in Mumbai, and some of her plants got damaged. She's really unhappy saying, oh, the gardener's not come, he's not doing something. Uh, I went home yesterday for her to figure out that she figured out on Google with her voice that there's, a, there's an app that can scan the plant and tell her what disease it has apparently. My 73-year-old mom can barely use like a proper iPhone and you know, and she, she did that on Google and the thing is, a lot of it was just like, you just had to place the device in front of the plant and it scanned it. So, and the delight on the faces when they can just solve a problem. So I think even for our consumers, our customers, it's the delight and it's coming from the place of a brand saying, here, this is for you and it does not cost us too much time or patience or energy. And then that delight also translates into, you know, some amount of, how do you say, not loyalty in my category, but preference definitely. So Absolutely. yeah, delight. And I, again, uh, I do uh, echo my thoughts with you on this too because I experience same thing, exactly same thing. <laughs> and yes, delight definitely comes there. So my ex uh, experience there was that again, my mom was just telling me, she said, 
do you know now if uh, the water pipe doesn't work in our, any of the floors anywhere, you don't have to really dig it out. There's an application, a scanner. <laughs> you put it and you tell exactly there's the problem. And it's just looking at my mom that they know and I did not yeah. know. I would have literally yeah. called somebody to break the wall and see what's <laughs> happening here. But yes, I mean, we don't think about it, but that's also automation. That's also AI. And somebody's really thought through it while we only talk about media, but that really adds a lot of value there. On our day-to-day lives, it's like seeping into our lives. You know? Absolutely. And uh, while Vikram though talked about convenience and those matters, but I think they're already doing it. <laughs> it really makes my life convenient when I know that I've hit my car and I can just know right away how much money will I get. It's like saving a lot of time for me, right? Thank you, Atika, for that. And Vesha, coming on to you, how do you describe it? I think we've covered all the fun words. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd really leave this at what, we start, what I started with, which is democratization. And what we're actually talking about, all of us, is actually it's making it so accessible um, uh, to, you know, whether it's in your day-to-day -day tasks or it is something really huge like, you know, uh, really big projects as well. So basically, it's more about how does it, even a small business or a small, you know, or an individual uses it to solve their day-to-day -day problems to like large organizations, corporations, countries, really looking at something that's, you know, in terms of big data analytics, etc. So I think it's more about how it's really, as we are talking about, like seeping into our everyday lives and making it more of a level playing, playing field for everyone to enable them and empower them with this technology that, you know, it's, it's basically, and you know, I really remember one of my past managers, he told me I was, and that was before we were having all this AI conversation, it was like about seven years ago. And I said, you know, this is something I want to do, but I'm not sure. He's like, never, technology is just an enabler. Whatever you think that's possible, there will be some vendor sitting in some corner that's going to be able to implement this. You just have to think what is the problem you're trying to solve and just have a vision of how you want to solve it technology is going to be there and that's basically AI now is like we don't have to really think something is impossible. It's just a matter of you thinking about it and really placing it out there and you'll find a way to implement it. So I think that's that's Thank you, thank you very uh, much. And uh, so I'm sure we can uh, keep on talking about it. A lot of perspectives came into picture, it was very insightful. And I'm sure many of you have questions, but in interest of time, I would request you to connect with the panelists individually. They are around here for any questions or queries you want to have, uh, you want to me discuss with them. And on that, that note, thank you so much. I really enjoy the session, and I really hope, as you said, technology is there that we just keep on evolving more and more. And it's uh, as uh, as even Vikram rightly said, it's not going to take away any job. Uh, it's a it's an amplified intelligence, human expertise with AI adding value. Uh, thank you very much.